Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> Happy July the 9th. Welcome to Unity of Wilmington, our hybrid service. For those of you here and those of you out in cyberspace. And also, we'd like you to join in our celebration singers as they sing the beginning of service. Thank you. Forget about your worries, you know it's time to hear you say, let the Holy Spirit shine a light on you, let the Holy Spirit shine a light on you, let the Holy Spirit shine a light on you, let the Holy Spirit That Holy Spirit is shining light all over the place today. Thank you, Celebration Singers. We have a few examples of our flexibility and adaptation today. Uh, let me just go through who is going to be serving us. In our sound booth is Christopher Dean doing the sound, the lights and sounds for our service. Yay, Christopher. You will notice at the piano, it is Dr. Katie Deese, our music director who is under the weather with COVID at this point in time and place. So send her all sorts of healing light. So Lisa Keating is being the flexible fingers at the keyboard. And our, <laughs> our soloist for the day, who was supposed to be Megan Golden, I think it was, also is sick. So we're having a healthy day here at Unity. So in her place are, you will be treated with the Deja Vu, the Deja Singers. Deja Vu Singers, I'm sorry. I, too many words, not enough words. They'll be delightfully entertaining to us a little later in the program. Speaking to us today will be Dr. Harris. Yay. So I would like to welcome anybody here for the first time, here in person. Yay. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Our ushers will give you a Welcome packet, which you can fill out if you desire. Uh, let us know who you are. Enjoy the service, and do come back again next week. Anybody here for the second or third time? Even better. Yes. And to all of us who keep coming back because it's a good place to come back to, welcome, welcome, welcome. And for all of you out in cyberspace, I'm glad you're out there. Please join us in our singing and our praying and listening and learning as we go forth. Now I would invite you all to join us in our, no, Daily Word. Daily. Active in the universe and in my life. God the good. I said we were flexible. 
So we'll continue with the affirmations then. I am a holy expression of God. I am here for a holy purpose. And I'm in the right place at the right time right now. And now we will do the daily word, which will be read by Teresa Rodriguez. So before I start, I would like to welcome Shirley Melito, who has joined the prayer team, and let's give her a big hand. Thank you. So today is July 9th, and the daily word is power. The affirmation is, I look within and discover my power. Great power lies within me like a treasure chest full of gold and precious jewels buried in my backyard. It is so close that I sometimes overlook it, leading me to search near and far, seeking strength and value outside myself. Yet my power is my potential, a gift for me to discover. I am endowed with wisdom, love, and creativity, gemstones meant to be uncovered and shared with the world. I am rich in my capacity to use these gifts to reach goals and create my life with intentionality. As I think, speak, and behave in accordance with my divine abilities, I share my treasures. I bring into the light the hidden parts of myself, knowing my power comes from expressing my best self. And if, 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 if Ephesians, Ephesians, so sorry. Book 2, verse 10. For me, we are what he has made us. For we are what he has made us. Created in Christ Jesus for good works with which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce, for your pleasure, the Deja Vu Singers. Jan Garrett wrote this song at a time when fires were blazing in the western U.S. where she lived. There was a lot of political uncertainty, and many people had blazing fires within. There was fear in the air. Fast forward to today, and that is still relevant. But Jan knew, and we know, that we can go within to quiet the fires. We can call on our divine power, our divine mind, and we can choose differently. We can choose peace. The song is I Dreamed of Rain. I dreamed of rain and the rains came soft and easy, sweet and I dreamed of rain and the rains came and peace spread over the land. I dreamed of sunshine and the winds changed and the green was easy and the rivers ran clear. I dreamed of summer and the winds changed and peace spread. Freedom. 
Wow. I'm a child of the 60s, and I was back with Joan Baez. <laughs> and the guitar, thank you so much. I'm a, I never could get my fret thing to work <laughs> on, on my guitar. And uh, I was kind of a one-note Willie. <laughs> At one song, I sang real well, and that was it. So <laughs> one act, oops, this might be the day act thing. Everything's dropping and popping. Wow. Welcome. Welcome to Unity of Wilmington. Give yourselves a hand. Woo. What a full house. Wow. Those of you on, on TV land, those of you online, thank you for joining us. Be a part of this service. Get right into our meditation. Listen to the message. Participate in the, in the collection and know that we love you, and when you're nearby, please be here. You know, the meditation is so important because it's like priming our spiritual pumps to receive a spiritual message and experience a spiritual transformation. So sit straight up in your seats. Put your feet flat upon the floor. Hands palm down upon your knees, sit erect. Take a deep breath and hold. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And in this space of peace and relaxation, when our outer eyes are closed and our inner eyes are open to see our vision of who we are and what we can become. Our meditation today is on the power of your made up And as you sit in your seats and as you listen to your heartbeat, as you breathe, in, out, in, out. And for this moment, I'd like for each and every one of you to focus on something you would like to be, something you would like to become, something you would like to have, something you would like to enjoy. This is a very personal meditation just for you. So just focus on that. Perhaps it's a good relationship with the person who loves you. 
or doors you and who I'm sitting to. Just see that person. See them smiling at you and see them excited to see you arrive. And say, it is good together. It is good. Perhaps it's a new house. Maybe a little smaller than the other, but still just full of love. By the water, by the ocean. See that house, see that dwelling. And feel the peace of yourself traveling someplace that you always wanted to go. Maybe it's Rome. Maybe it's Paris. But visualize that place exactly where you want it. And then finally, let us visualize ourselves in front of the life mirror. And see yourself exactly the way you want to be. Smiling. Full of joy. You know that you have the power of a made-up mind to create that vision. create that image and to make it real. And as you gaze upon yourself in life's mirror, say it is good together. It is good. So it is. Give yourselves a hand. I don't want to let go. <laughs> wow, Douglas, Alan, how are you today, my good friends? We just rode by your house yesterday looking at your marvelous view of the river. Yes, yes, I just had to see it. Sandra said, why don't we live near the river? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> well, folks, today is a magnificent day. Today is actually the second Sunday. I've been very focused on this new, this new year. And this is the second Sunday of the last half of the month. <laughs> That's kind of scary. <laughs> but if you think about it, six months have gone by so fast, I didn't even notice it. You know, we just look, woke up and all of a sudden it was July. So we're on the second Sunday of the, se se of the seventh month and the first month of the second half of the year. So we have six months left to make this year our year for outrageous success. Not just plain old success, but outrageous success. Let's say that together. Outrageous success. And see, outrageous success is beyond your own expectations. You know, many times, you know, so often we pray for water, a cup, and we could be praying for the ocean. So many times we let our own limitations frame the things that are possible for us. 
So this day, this Sunday, the, our, the idea, the thought, the, the, the message is the power of a made-up mind. And that's a powerful thought, folks, because a made-up mind has such power that it is able to cut through obstacles, cut through disappointments to create a new world for yourself. When we think about the day, we think about this second half of the year, I'd like to open with a quote from Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali is one of my favorite people. I, I have a picture. I've met Ali a few times. And it's funny, I always thought Ali was taller than he was. You know, I, I, I don't know, I was expecting him to be like up here somewhere. But he's about 6'3", so my, our grandson is what, 6'5"? Uh, but a very imposing figure. When you met him, you knew you had met somebody special. And he had an incredible quote. He said, it's hard to beat a guy when he's got his mind made up that he's going to win. It's hard to beat a guy when he's got his mind made up that he's going to win. And so when we look at where we are right now, we think about this. If this is going to be our year for health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, abundance, then we have less than six months to make it happen. <laughs> and I keep hopping on that because time goes by so fast, if you're not aware of it, then you may not use each and every second. God, God gives everybody the same amount of time. You know, there's 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, but it's really what you do with it. If time is our God's gift to us, then what we do with it is our gift to God. And so when we look at where we are right now, I think a thought is, what do I have to do to create the things that I said I wanted to create this year? Think back. Did everybody here have one-year goals? <laughs> I didn't hear that. Yes! <laughs> it's okay. You know, when we start out, that one of the great things about the New Year is you always make these New Year's resolutions. And 90% of the people by February don't remember what they were anyway. And so by July, it's out of the question. But the beautiful thing is you can start now. One of the great writers said, uh, I think it was Mary Pickford. Somebody said, who's Mary Pickford? A few of us know who she was. <laughs> she was a silent film star. And one of her great quotes was, you can never make a new beginning, but you can always create a new ending. So even if you didn't do your goals the first part of the year, right now you have the capacity to create an ending that's exactly the way you want it to be. And so the question is really, and I'll, I'll put in the personal, the question is what skills, what talents do I possess, meaning you, meaning me, what skills or talents do I possess that can help me over the next six months make this year my year? Let's point at yourself and say my year. My year for good health, happiness, love, success, prosperity, abundance. So this really puts a different frame on today. You know, it's like we can't mess around <laughs> We, we got to do something. And so this idea, when we think about that, one of the most powerful tools that we have is the power of a made-up mind. That the moment you decide something, the moment you, you declare that this is what I want to have, this is what I want to experience, you automatically set a, into motion the vibrations to make it happen. In fact, a made-up mind is your own power tool. Not only to take you where you want to go, but to get you through obstacles. To get you dis through disappointments. The made-up mind can create a vision for yourself where you're not even aware of all the challenges. You know, there's some people, you know, when they talk about Daniel and, and uh, being in the, uh, in the lion's den, What's the one, Daniel, when they're in the, in the burning furnace? Or is it uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were dancing and singing. <laughs> okay, And that's saying that 
when you're in whatever the mess is that is your life, through a change in your state of mind, you can create a new life exactly the way you want it to be. And the made up mind is a power tool to help you remove obstacles because it takes away the things that are in the middle. It takes away, we get so involved sometimes with the situation and the conditions that we forget our possibilities. Some people can be so focused on losing that they can't win. Have you ever met people like that? I'll give you all the reasons why it won't happen. I was telling somebody, I'm gonna, one day I'm going to get a Grammy. Everybody lined up. It's almost like in droves. No way. <laughs> Have you ever had that happen where you said you want to do something great and the people around you tell you you can't do it? No way. You can overcome that with the power of a made-up mind. So let's talk about five keys to developing and using your power of a made-up mind. Number one, you must state what you want in specific terms. You must state what you want. You can't hit a target that you can't see. You can't hit a target that you don't have. Can you imagine going into the train station of life and saying, I'd like a ticket? <laughs> They're going to ask you what? Where to? <laughs> And if you don't have a destination, it doesn't matter how much money you have in your pocket, you can't buy a ticket because there's no ticket to nowhere. <laughs> I'd like one of those. <laughs> I guess you buy a ticket to nowhere by doing nothing. <laughs> there are people that sit in the waiting room. You remember the days when you, I just dated myself. See, nobody rides the bus, but when I was a kid, the bus was the main mode of transportation. How many of you all remember the bus, the Greyhound? <laughs> yeah. And you'd be sitting there in the waiting room, <laughs> waiting for the bus. Some people spend their entire lives in the waiting room of life because they have no destination. So you have to state what you want in specific terms. Number two, you must have faith in yourself and in the process. Where there's no faith, there's no blessing. But it's a huge, a little faith. Number three, and this is the biggie, folks. You must make a decision to change. The power of a made-up mind is absolutely useless if you don't make a decision to use it. If you don't make a decision to focus on something you want to be doing half. And then the fourth is really where we put the spiritual power into action. Act as though you already have it. Act like you've already made it where you want to go. You see, when you do that, you get into the vibration of what it is. And we'll talk a little bit more about the law of attraction. When you act, you notice even on a simple level, when you smile at people, what do people do? They smile back. Similarly, if you frown at them, <laughs> they, they frown back. Because everything you do sends out of energy, sends out of vibration. And so when you act as though you've already received whatever it is, you're creating the vibration. And that's what the law of attraction is all about. It always says, act as if. You know, if you notice, one of my great affirmations is, I walk through the world like a champion. We notice when you walk into a place, you can either walk in like you're sneaking in, or you can walk in like you belong there. So you want to walk through the world like a champion. I walk through the world like a champion with class and style. Let's say that together. I walk through the world like a champion with class and style. So when you act like you're already there, you got it. And then finally, the fifth key, <laughs> you got to act on it. You got to take action. So let's look at this, these, these five topics. When we look at the idea of state what you want in specific terms, one of the greatest boxing matches that ever was was the Rumble in the Jungle. Uh, Muhammad Ali fought George Foreman. And you know, uh, I was doing some research a while ago. That was the first big fight where they had all the television I saw it on, on the, uh, what do you call it, the, um, in the movie theater. 
That was when they had pay-per-view. TV had not yet gotten there. <laughs> so, so, so you actually went to the movie theater, and they had to fight. You, you went in, and they had it up on the screen. Rumble in the jungle. I mean, that was the biggie. And let me tell you something. That was an amazing lesson, because think about this. Ali had been, because of his court battle, he hadn't fought for a number of years. He laid off for about five years until his court, you know, they, when he refused to, to go into the draft, they took his boxing license, and he appealed it all the way up to the Supreme Court. They reversed it. But for five years, he couldn't fight. And it was really kind of at his prime. You know, in the, in the boxing game, age is not your friend, <laughs> OK? <laughs> you know, in many games, you get wiser and, and, and whatnot. But in boxing, you better, you know, that's a young person's game. George Foreman, meanwhile, was the man. George was bigger. George was stronger. Everybody George had come up against, he'd knocked them out. So here we got Ali and George Frazier in the rumble in the jungle. The odds were against Ali, four to one that he was going to lose. I mean, just nobody thought that Ali. And you know how people give you all the excuses why you can't do it? You don't have enough education. You don't have the resources. Well, the world gave Ali, gave all the excuses why Ali couldn't win. The odds were four to one. But Ali, think about his quote. Ali made up his mind that he was going to win. Ali used the power of a made-up mind to defy the odds. And he used the spiritual principle, the I am principle. You know, in the book of Genesis, the third third chapter, the 13th and 14th verses, when God told Moses, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses is like all of us. He was like making excuses like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go tell Pharaoh. Who will I say sent me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, why will anybody listen? On what authority am I coming? And God said, tell him that I am that I am. And I often wonder what that means. I am is the creative power. So I am that I am is the creative power of the creative power, the infinite possibilities. And so he told Moses, go tell him that I am sent you. So whatever you say, this is bad grammar, but good sense. Whatever you say you am, <laughs> I'll even mess it up further. You is. <laughs> And what was Ali's mantra? I am the greatest. He said it all over the world. I am the greatest. And that was his, front, his state of mind. And so for seven rounds, and I was in the theater watching that, and it was painful. I mean, George Foreman hit Ali everywhere you could hit him. <laughs> and he was big, and he started off and you know, at first, Ali was doing a little dancing, boy, but he got hit a few times. He slowed down. And it was all, we almost, watching the fight, almost thought that Ali was hurt. Because if you ever watch it on the video, you see him against the ropes and bouncing off the ropes. And he said, I think he's hurt. I think he's hurt. And I'm going to be truthful. I didn't see the knockout. By the seventh round, I was so disappointed. I'm like, I want some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> I go down, I'm standing every day. A lot of people felt the same thing. There's a long line of people waiting to get popped on. And all you hear is this roar. Rawr! Like, what happened? We all were running back inside. Ali knocked him out. What? What? How did that happen? Thank God they had instant replay. <laughs> but what Ali had done was he let George Foreman punch himself out. He let him punch himself out until... By the eighth round, George had nothing left. He was like sleepwalking. And Ali hit him so hard, he fell down. He tried to get up and fell back down again. So what, is it, what was it that kept Ali going? The power of a made-up mind. That was the thing that made him endure all those punches. And so when we look at this, Ali was a strategist. He said, if I'm going to win, there are two ways I can win. I can be better or I can refuse to lose. Many times in your life, you win because you refuse to lose. I guarantee you there were times when everybody said you couldn't do it. 
and you just said, I am not losing. I am hanging in till here till the cows come home making pancakes. I will be here. <laughs> so that idea of a, pay, of a made up mind, the thing that gave Ali the ability to do it was he was focused. He stated what he wanted. He was very clear about it. He understood it. He'd been a heavyweight champion, so he was able to identify with it. He knew exactly what he wanted. And the end result was he got it. He achieved it. So there's a great affirmation. We, I know what I want. Let's say that together. I know what I want. Now, the purpose of the, af of the meditation today was to give you a little exercise. When you go home, think about what you really want for the end of this year. And then the affirmation, I know what I want. The second key, you must have faith in yourself and in the process. If you don't have faith in yourself, it will not work. If you don't believe you can do it, you're lost coming out the gate. David and Goliath, as 1 Samuel, I love that story because if you think about this, Goliath is a, they, they said uh, so many cubics and somebody translated it, it was a nine foot tall giant who was coming to enslave the Israelites. And they agreed that, he said, let's let our champions fight. Who will come out and fight against Goliath? Now, you had all the military men, but nobody, our fight, nobody volunteered. <laughs> and up comes this kid, a shepherd boy, David. He says, I'll fight. Can you imagine what the people said? <laughs> they laughed at him. You're no soldier. You don't have what it takes. Even the king said, listen. Give you, let, me, let, let me let you use my shield, my armor, my sword. And David said, mm. he tried it for me. He said, that won't work. I'm, let me go with what I know. And so that's the idea of believing in yourself. Here he is confronted with this great challenge, and he used what he knew. He knew how to do a slingshot. He knew how to aim that slingshot and hit in the right place. And so I take this back to you, to us that when we are confronted with changes and things we have to do, we have to have faith in ourselves. When you have faith in yourself, the universe confirms that faith. Who would have known that there was that one little spot up there on Goliath's head, that when you hit him with a little rock right there, it took him out. David had a plan, he had a made up mind. You can't walk out into a situation when you are doubtful. If David had been doubtful, it would have been a whole different story. <laughs> the whole history would have changed. And so this idea of having faith in yourself is critical. I have faith in myself. Let's say that together. I have faith in myself. And then you've got to have faith in the process. Because if you don't have faith in the process, then you won't do it. So we know every success book says the same thing. Write the vision. The Bible said, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that read it. Let's make a plan. <laughs> Let's operate on that plan on a daily basis. Let's monitor our progress. If we hang in there, we'll get the results. And it takes that kind of belief. When you don't lay out your plans the night before, you put yourself at a disadvantage. So when you have faith in the process, you have to know that when you do those things, it'll work for you. Then there's that higher order process. We know we often talk about the theory of relativity, E equals MC squared. E is energy, vibration, equals mass, manifestation, times the speed of light squared. So then manifestation is equal vibration divided by the speed of light squared. Now, the, the numbers don't really matter, it's the concept. Whenever you want something badly, that's a high energy level. When your desire is deep, think about this. Everything you've ever really wanted, you got it. As a child, how many people wanted a car when they were young, young men or young women, especially young men? Did you get the car? Yeah. Whenever you meet a young person who's too trifling to get a car, you're like, mm. <laughs> you, I don't know about you. So the idea is to understand the process, and the process says, if you have a deep level of desire, 
and that desire is focused through a made-up mind, nothing is impossible. The third key. No, I have faith in myself. Let's say that together. I have faith in myself. I have faith in the process. I have faith in the process. The third key, you got to make a decision. The Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. You either church serve the God or do something, or the God will do nothing. Once you make that decision, then all you have to do is act on it. It's something about making the decision. It means that you close off all the other possibilities. Really, decision means to cut off all the other possibilities. So you only see success. You choose this day to work, to go after it. So whatever you're facing in your life right now, all you have to do is choose to fix it. Choose to overcome it, and you have the vibration necessary to make it happen. A question arises, though, is, why don't people make a decision to change? You ever look around and you see people in situations and they stay stuck in whatever it is? And you know the old dog story, the dog sitting on the porch whimpering, and a stranger comes along and says to the owner of the dog, what's wrong with the dog? Why is he whimpering like that? He said, because he's sitting on a nail. So why doesn't he get off the nail? The owner said, because it doesn't hurt badly enough. So in our lives right now, I challenge each and every one of us, because we're all in the same boat. We're just in different places. And I'm up here, you're down there, but we really all have the same challenges. What are you doing that is hurting, but it doesn't hurt bad enough to make, you make a decision to change? And all it takes is that one decision, like, I've had it. I'm done with this. I make a decision for change in my life together. I make a decision for change in my life. And finally, well, not finally, <laughs> that was number three. Number four, <laughs> trying to get to the end, right? <laughs> number four is to act as though what you're seeking has already manifested. And so when you do that, you literally condition yourself to receiving the blessing. An experiment was done, and they took some young men at a basketball court, and for 30 days, one group practiced for an hour shooting free throws. They had a control group that didn't do anything but for a half hour, they sat and visualized shooting free throws. When they did the study, both of them had progressed about the same. And so when you can get into the vision of what it is you want to be, do, and have, and see it as though it's already done, you're halfway home. I see myself as complete. <laughs> Let's say that together. I see myself as complete. And see, this is a powerful tool. You, anything you want. I see myself as healthy, together. I see myself as healthy. Yeah. I see myself as happy. I see myself living a life of abundance. I see myself living a life of abundance. Give yourselves a hand. Yeah. <laughs> and then finally, you got to take action. Because until you take action, it's all just a game. The cornerstone of a made-up mind is action. <clears throat> when you take action, you confirm the thought. That's a profound lesson. The thing that keeps people from taking action is doubt. If you're not sure, you're not going to go out on that limb. And so that idea of having faith in yourself, it all wraps around. You know that scripture that says, when Jesus says, tell this mountain to be cast into the sea and doubt not. That which you say will come to pass. And so the message is, no matter how outrageous it may seem, no matter how impossible it may seem, as long as you... Take action on it with conviction that you can do it. The universe will make it happen for you. I mean, it's amazing. You know that third, that game before the Super Bowl when Patrick Mahone, when they were like, it was 10 seconds left, and they could have kicked the field goal and tied it up. 
And that's what everybody was saying, tied up. Mahone had been hurt. His ankle was hurt. They said he couldn't run. So what did he do? He took action. He ran the ball. Nobody expected that. He got about 10 yards. But what people didn't know, you see, we seek on our level of consciousness. The manifestation formula operates on a different level of consciousness, on a higher level. So we may, but we have to do all that we can do to get that, 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 that feedback. Patrick had no idea that the referees were going to call a foul and they had a 15-yard penalty, and they went on and won the game. And that's how it is in life. When you take action with conviction, with the power of a made-up mind, Nothing is impossible. So let's recap. Was this fun? Yeah. All right. I think everybody, I'm giving everybody homework today. And those of you out online, I hope you got your notepad because I'll be checking your papers. <laughs> so just to recap, the five keys for developing and using your power of a made-up mind, number one, state what you want, specific. Number two, I have faith in myself. You must have faith in yourself and in the process. Number three, you have to make a decision to go for it. Number four, act as though it's already manifested. And number five, you have to take action. So let's stand and close out today. I think uh, everybody's got their marching orders. <laughs> These next six months, everybody's going to be working like beavers doing it and getting things done. You know what? We should have a, 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 a New Year's service yes. on the 31st, and everybody sort of report in, like, yeah, man, I remember that. I got it done. I said I wanted to do this. I got it. I said I wanted to do that. I got it. <laughs> I can't wait. All right. I'll affirm it, and you say it after me. I state what I want by the end of this year. I state what I want. I have faith in myself and in the process. I have faith in myself and in the process. I make a decision that this is my year. I make a decision that this is my year. Whose year? My, my year. I act as though it's already done. I act as though it's already done. And then finally, I take action together. I take action. Action! Give yourselves a hand. You may be seated. Woo! I enjoyed that. I tell you, I'm ready to get busy, Sandra. Look, crack up the pots and pans. We're going to do some cooking up in here. <laughs> Sandra said, I, Sandra had me convinced that she was allergic to cooking for a long time. <laughs> All right, we're going to prepare for our offering. We thank all of you on, and online and those here. Give generously. You see the work that we're doing here. This is a great group, so let, give yourselves another hand. I mean, this, you, you all make the speaker much better. All right, let's do our offering meditation. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. All right. Gratitude within me, gratitude.
I'm gonna learn that. Thank you, everyone. Give, that, give ourselves a hand. We're getting through this, this song pretty good now, right? Thank you so much, Brian. Let us be still inside and give thanks for this offering, knowing that it was given in love, knowing that it was given in concern, knowing that it was given to uplift this ministry and help us do the things that must be done. We give thanks to those online who are giving and sending their, their tithes and offerings into this church, knowing that you're uplifting us and you're giving us great possibilities. We thank you as we accept this offering as a token of your love and as a token of your belief in this ministry and the good work we do. We can do it because of you, with you, Of your fellow man, lend him my helping hand, put a little love in your heart. You see it's getting late, oh, oh please don't hesitate, put a little love in your heart. And the world would be a better place, and the world would be a better place for you and me. You just wait and see. The day goes by and still the children cry. Put a little love in your heart. We want the world to know. We won't let hatred go. Put a little love in your heart. And the world will be a better place. And the world will be a better place for you and me. You just wait. Wow. Thank you, thank you, Deja Vu Singers. Wonderful. It's a pleasure to hear you. Everything has to come to at least a closure, and today's closure is not the end because we keep on keeping on, which is a good thing. Our announcements for the day are, Lisa Keating will be our prayer partner. She'll be over there by the prayer box. So join her to get prayered up, to make, renew your connections to your, to your God. And there is a prayer, we can write your prayer requests as well, and they will be prayed over here for a month, and they go out to Silent Unity for another month. And please avail yourself of Silent Unity service as well. It's a great comfort and support to us in our daily lives. Today after the service, we will have a curtain meditation. Uh, Maja will be here at 1230, right here. Join the party. The ladies' month for July will happen this coming Tuesday at, a, at the German Cafe downtown at the Cotton Exchange on Tuesday the 11th at 12 noon. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the uh, fellowship hall, so if you'd like to join the ladies for lunch, 
please sign up and join the party. It's always very much fun. Our monthly meditation, the Wednesday meditation, will be also happening the 19th, a week from Wednesday. I have to get my days straightened out here. And that will be on mind, body, and heart and soul meditation, and will be led by Teresa Rodriguez. The other reminder that I'd like to make is that the annual UMAS retreat will be held, which is held in October. The registration is going on for it now, and the early registration prices end, this, <clears throat> end in August. So if you are interested in going to the Georgia mountains in the fall, North Car I'm sorry, we're in North Carolina this year, and the world keeps turning. Uh, we're going to the North Carolina mountains this year uh, in October. It's a three-day festival. It's got terrific, they have terrific speakers, great fun, great food. The registration ends, the pre-registration bargain prices end in August. I believe it's the middle of August. So get in early, get your good prices to take that for that. And today, in terms of the teams that we celebrate that keep us keeping on, are our garden team and our building team. So people who participate in those, can you please stand up and raise your hand? Stand Just stand up and get recognized. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. The, the place looks terrific. And they're always looking for fellow members to help pull weeds, water grass, whatever that has to be done to keep our building looking as gorgeous as it is. And it is a very, very lovely, peaceful property. So having said that, I now invite you to join us in our closing prayer. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Now join the celebration singers for our closing song. protect us. May the wisdom of God lead us and guide us. May the love of God uplift us and bring us clarity and make smooth, beautiful, and perfect our way until we meet again, and so it is.